Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this video, uh, which is, it's, this is now video is part of a series on cloud security fundamentals in which we're going to be discussing, you know, some very core concepts, which everybody who's working on cloud security should know. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a very important topic, which is quite hot nowadays, which is called cloud security posture management. Uh, this is, believe me, if you're working in cloud security, you're going to come into this, uh, into contact with this topic one point or another, and you should definitely know this. Uh, about my, just to give you an idea, I've done over three to four successful implementations of a cloud security posture management solution in my career. So based on what I have learned and my experiences, I'm going to try and summarize the core concepts and what you need to take into mind if you really want to succeed in the implementation of a CSPM. So let's get started, guys. Uh, first of all, just back to basics. What is a cloud security posture management solution? Let's take a look at that first. Uh, what the what's the need for this solution? What it does? What, what's the value add it provides to an organization? So let's take a step back and try to understand. Now the cloud. Uh, I've you know if you attended my previous videos and seen them, you'll understand. Now the cloud is a very complex beast. You know, it's constantly changing, and uh, the, the thing about the cloud is it changes very fast, you know, the workloads are changing very fast and that's like a strength of the cloud, you know, but it's a big challenge also. I mean, people like the cloud because you can make changes very fast, but that also leads to a lot of security issues also. And you need to implement more and more uh, what you call controls around this. And you see, you have more and more stuff being put into the cloud. You need to make sure that all of these are making your security standards also. So keep that in mind, and that, is, that has become a big challenge for people who move to the cloud, the speed and the complexity of the cloud and more and more things which are coming in. So keeping that in mind, what do you think is the main reason uh, people get compromised in the cloud? Like companies, you see their breaches, right? What do you think is the main reason? So you might be surprised if we take a look. It's uh, misconfigurations. What are misconfigurations? Simple errors. They are responsible for around 65 to 70% of all the challenges in the cloud. And all those big, like what do you call news you hear in the cloud, XY organization got compromised. And uh, I'll, put, I'll try to put a link in the description uh, to uh, what do you call, uh, to the study which was done. So misconfiguration may like seem very straightforward. It's not as exciting as say cyber criminals hacking into your organization and they seem to be very avoidable. But in fact, they, they are the ones which cause the most problem. Why is that? Well, to be simple, uh, the cloud is, you know, quite complex. It comprises of a multitude of settings, policies, you have so many services talking to each other, which makes it very complicated. And it like, what do you call, especially nowadays, which companies, because of the last couple of two years, uh, the world has changed so much and people have moved more and more to the cloud, right? Remote work has become so normal. What has happened when people start to adopt new technologies very quickly without fully understanding them, uh, the teams cannot know and they can make like silly mistakes, which can cause to a lot of issues. So that is the reason misconfigurations have been the leading cause of like security issues and they need to really need to understand. So you need to have some way of knowing what is happening. Some uh, like security risk happens. What can I do to change it quickly? So th this is why the whole misconfiguration issue comes in. And if you if you like a CISO or a head of security, you're going to have like lots of problems, lots of sleepless nights. So what do you think they are main concerns, you know? Uh, if I'm a CISO, I'll be thinking, uh, is my cloud secure? Am I following best practices? You know, uh, what's my current posture? Do I even know how secure I am in the cloud? Like if I want to know like 95% uh, am I secure? Am I 50% am I benchmark? If I want to benchmark myself, how will I know if somebody does unauthorized activities in the cloud? Will I be alerted if somebody say opens up a server to the internet or maybe like an S3 bucket? And if I get audited tomorrow for like, a, I don't know, PCI audit or an ISO audit, will I know that? And if I have like a hybrid cloud, you know, multi-cloud, I have Google Cloud, I have Azure, I have AWS, whatever I want a single dashboard to tell me how secure my cloud is. So now I hope you are start to understand where this is coming from and why the need for a cloud security posture management comes in. So what is CSPM? Now that we understand, it is a service that continually monitors your cloud environment. You know, it identifies misconfigurations and issues and compliance risks. It's like a one-stop shop. It tells you everything about your cloud environment, what's happening, what are the risks. Percentage-wise, it'll tell you what are the issues there, like how many uh, uh, policies are not being complied with, what are the risks which are happening. It's like a one dashboard telling you everything. And, you know, I mean, Gartner in the Risk Management Summit, I think 2021, they said that CSPM is like become like a, it's like a mandatory tool. If you're in the cloud, you need to have it because of the amount of risky misconfigurations that can happen. And most of the cloud providers, you know, AWS, Azure, Google, all of them have native uh, CSPM provided. 
uh, like they have it built in into their offerings and we're going to take a look at that shortly so uh, but i hope you understand now what a cspm is and what gap it's supposed to fill so let's take a look i mean if you go to aws you know aws has security hub it's a very powerful cloud security posture management which aws itself provides it it it, it takes a look at all the services and it aggregates them it will tell you what are your security controls, like what are the areas where we're having problems. And you can even enable auto remediation. So if something happens, like say somebody opens up like an RDP port to the internet or somebody removes encryption or versioning from an S3 bucket, it'll, it can actually auto remediate and fix it. So it's a very powerful tool. Uh, if you look at, this is actually like from Google Cloud. Google Cloud is the same thing. They have, I think it's called Security Command Center, yeah. It's like a centralized dashboard. You know, you can see the number of vulnerabilities, which are high, which are critical. And it reports on compliance. It tells you what are the threats targeting your Google assets. So you understand now, like, where this is coming from, right? And if you're a company with a large cloud infrastructure, you, you really need to have a CSPM. Uh, if you have, like, a multi-cloud environment, you, you, what if you have Azure, you have AWS, Google, then going with a native cloud usually is not recommended. It, it would be better to have a third-party one because they have better reportings, better dashboarding, and better integrations also. So it might cost you a little bit more, but usually that this is how it looks like. So this is, I'm not like watching for any vendor. This is Prisma Cloud, Palo Alto. So it can plug into your multiple environments like Azure, like AWS, and what do you call, it can really tell you, uh, it has a very good reporting abilities. If you look, it can tell you how good you are with CIS, how, where do you stand? It'll come, you give you a complete dashboard of your compliance trend. It'll tell you how many checks you're passing, how many you're failing. So, and what do you call, you can set up auto remediation. So if something happens, so it really it gives you a very single stop dashboard for your hybrid cloud environment. So I hope you understood now, like guys, like what a CSPM is and what gap it's filling. So now that you've decided and you like, I think it's a good tool and you want to implement it. Uh, what are the things you need to keep in mind if you really want to implement it successfully, guys? So take it from me as somebody who has implemented it not once, like I think three to four times I've done an implementation. So first of all is when you plug it in, your CSPM, when you onboard your cloud assets, first thing you're going to do, you're going to see a huge bucket load of alerts on your dashboard. So don't get scared by that because now you have visibility. So you're going to see, you're going to be submerged with a huge amount of alerts. So don't get scared. Look at the alerts, look at the critical high ones, try to understand and what you have to focus on. Okay, you have a limited time, limited efforts. So take a look at what you need to do and prioritize it accordingly. And other thing is be realistic. You will never ever get 100% compliance in the cloud. Always there will be some issues. So you need to be smart and like uh, prioritize what can be done and look at what other controls you have. And guys, very important, do not turn on auto remediation on day one. What's gonna happen is you're gonna break something. Some application might get, uh, what do you call, uh, stopped because of some control you put in. Talk to the teams, try to understand what's happening. And then after a while, when you're comfortable, turn on auto remediation. Going on to the second point, your cloud and technology teams, please involve them from day one. They need to know what tool you're putting in, what are the alerts which are coming in, make them a partner, give them access to it, give them read-only access. And another one is link with your ticketing system, guys. Don't rely on emails. Uh, if you just put it on email, you're going to get like 100 alerts. And people will get like bored after a while. You'll get alert fatigue. If you link it, link the, your critical ones and your medium high ones to your ticketing systems like Jira or ServiceNow, it's going to follow your company's escalation metrics, you know. So those automatically a ticket will get created, alerted. And this is much better. Take it from me based on experience. And lastly, most importantly, guys, please onboard everything. Whatever assets and accounts, subscriptions you have, please onboard them on to your uh, uh, CSPM so that you get full visibility. Don't think that your development accounts are not important. Something can happen over there also so, and get can accidentally get copied also. So really onboard everything. Try to understand why you're doing it. So I hope you understood, guys, like what the value add of a CSPM is, what gap it fills, and what other things you can do to successfully implement it. If you like this video, thank you so much. Please do subscribe to this channel so you get alerted when I put in new videos. Thank you and see you in the next video, guys. Thank you.